Hi, I'm Keisha Solomon based in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I just wanted to share a couple of incidents that happened um, earlier this year at work that I thought were relevant for the conversation today. Um, the first was an incident where I was at lunch with a fellow Atlanta-based employee, an African-American man, um, who was sharing some of his guidance or feedback or advice as someone who's been in the company a little bit longer um, with myself and another African-American female. Um, and his analogy that he used was as a tactic for surviving or thriving or really making his way as a black man in the company was this analogy of um, how sometimes tall people will walk a little slunched over or not quite fully upright um, because they don't wanna draw attention to themselves or make people feel intimidated or threatened um, by, by the reality of, of, of them being tall. And so that was his, his advice or his tactic that he shared, that he, he kind of does that um, to keep from drawing too much attention to himself or making people feel intimidated by him at work. The second incident happened uh, maybe a little bit later. It was a BRG, a business resource group meeting, the, the one for um, African-Americans um, in the company or, or black people in the company. And it was the first one of those that I attended. I was really excited about it, just ready to lean in and get engaged um, where I can. And since my work is really focused on metrics and reporting, I was very interested in understanding um, what existed there and, and how I could help with, with any of that. And so I, I remember raising my hand when the, the call for questions was presented and I asked what I thought was a very simple question. And the question was, well, how many of us are here and, and what positions or what roles do we uh, tend to, to fall in? And the response was not what I expected. It was one that kind of looked like, ooh, I just opened a can of worms and yeah, no, don't really want to say anything about that. Um, and, and it was kind of like, well, yeah, we, we dug into that and it didn't really look good. So we just didn't want to um, make that public. So both of those incidents really struck me and they sat with me for a while. Um, because it really brought into focus very clearly for me that there are some things happening in this company that we're not willing to admit to ourselves. There are experiences, there's very different experience that some people are having based on just the reality of, of who they are or how they show up um, at work and not show up emotionally or professionally, but just show up as they were born or created or made. Um, Sometime later, I came across this phrase called psychological safety. And it's something that I've been meditating and marinating on for a while. Like, what does it mean? Um, how do you create it? So I wanna quickly read the definition. Psychological safety is being able to show and employ oneself without fear of negative consequence to self-image, status, or career. I felt like this was something super relevant, especially getting the, given the two incidents that happened. Um, and I think one of the things that I've seen happen a lot in this time and in other times where these sort of topics or these um, factors or these realities about our country and our world and our society are being brought, being brought to the forefront. And it's this sort of confusing thing of what is racist? Is that racist or is that not racist? Or am I racist or am I not racist? Or can I say this or not say that? Or who can do this or who can do that? And it's just confusing. It leads to a lot of circular conversations and finger pointing because everyone has an excuse for why they should be able to do something or everyone has a reason for uh, why this or that didn't mean what someone else interpreted it to mean. And so I think instead of chasing these individual moments or these individual activities, I think focusing more on this notion of psychological safety and asking ourselves some very serious questions about that. And the first one being, am I creating a psychologically safe space for others? I think that's the very first question. I think the next question after that is, does that require me to modify the reality of my existence in order to make people feel comfortable with me? Do I have to walk slunched over? Do I have to try to not draw attention to myself? 
or modify my reality in some way to make other people feel psychologically safe. The next question is, am I only focused on my own psychological safety? Is it more important that I feel comfortable with things um, and I, I'm not really concerned whether or not other people are comfortable? And then am I aware? Am I aware if others do or do not feel psychologically safe? I think if we ask those questions to ourselves and really answer them honestly, I, I believe that we would begin to recognize what is really happening for some other people. The fact that some people in this world are having to walk slunched over so as not to feel like their lives are at risk or their work or their career or their status or their opportunities for success or position or advancement are at risk. I think that we, if we were really in a psychologically safe space, we wouldn't be ashamed to share numbers that don't tell the stories that we wanna hear about ourselves. We would be okay with accepting the reality that we're not doing as great as we want. Um, and we could make plans out in the open on how we're gonna address that and what that means and what value that has to not only the people at the company, but the company as a business, um, as, a, as, a, as a member, as a, as a corporate citizen of this, um, this country and this world. Um, I, I think that if we really start to focus more on those things, then we can create that culture that we say we wanna have. Um, but until we do that, then we'll just be focusing on minor incidents or each new incident that's come up and not recognizing the greater change that needs to happen. So thanks for allowing me to share my voice.